one of the best ways to measure whether or not a food is right for you is actually quite simple. After you eat the meal, how do you feel right afterwards? And then how do you feel about an hour or two later? That will actually tell you quite a bit. It'll tell you whether or not you get a good glucose response. It could tell you whether or not your digestive system reacted well. It could tell you whether or not it was producing good satiety for you. So simply pay attention to how you felt right after you ate and about an hour or two later. Pay attention and then you can make those connections that'll help drive you to make good decisions in the future. It sounds so simple. Why isn't this obvious? You know why? Because we're so disconnected from our bodies and then to take it a step further, disconnected from how our bodies feel and then connecting that to what we ate earlier yeah. in the day. Yeah. Like almost nobody well, I say that consciously does that. Yeah, it's actually been effort like uh, to, to get to that place. Cause it's like, you just get into the rhythm of everything and you're trying to get things done and get to work on time and all, and you're just slamming food down and you think that, uh, Oh wow, my body's reacting kind of weird today. And you don't associate it a lot with like what you're eating or, I, or even worse. It's not reacting weird. It's doing what it always does at noon or always does right. late, early, you know, early afternoon. This is like how morning. I am. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, <clears throat> I've thought about this a lot. Actually, I've tried to like go back and think back into my early twenties and did I just not experience this much digestive issue or was I really that just disconnected from myself? Mm. Like I can't, I, I honestly, I just, there, of course I have moments where I can think back, oh man, I remember I had that one thing. It really tore me up like an extreme level of something. But I, I, I feel like I'm so in tune now. Like I can tell after I eat a food an hour to two hours afterwards, like, Okay, even if it didn't destroy me, it didn't agree with me. I can yeah. see the the bloating. I can just feel it feels like kind of a rock is kind of sitting in my stomach a little bit. Maybe a, I'm a little gassy, but I'm not like running to the, the toilet right away. So am I just more in tune today at 40 something years old or you know, as my as my gut really changed a lot since it what do you, th do I you think I think it's both because yeah. I'll ask you this question, Adam. Um I do think it's both. As you get older, your body will change and and if you have if you're eating things that cause issues or, or, you know, digestive issues in particular over time, just like a joint injury, it can get worse and worse over time. So I think it's both, but I'll ask you this. I think this will help illuminate it for, for you. Maybe when you started competing, when you had to pay attention to every single gram and morsel and ounce of water, yeah. how revealing was that to you in yeah. that period of time? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a good point. Right. And I've, and I've, I've alluded to this on the podcast several times that that, that time in my life, one of the, the most valuable things yeah. I got from it was becoming so in tune with my body. And so, yeah. I mean, I, just within that period of time. Yeah. And, and that was a long enough period of time uh, for me because it was a good three years there of that consistency that I think I become, I became very aware of anything that even, you know, threw me off in the, the slightest bit. But I mean, you're right. It's it, we have these these natural things that uh, you know whatever your your belief is, whether we were created this way, we evolved this way, uh, that that give us these like clues of hey, probably not the best decision for you, and yet we we tend to ignore them, you know, for as you say, your are the hedonistic uh, values that it gives us, right? Because it tastes so good going down, you know, yeah. but forget about how I feel the next two hours, the next 24 hours. Well, I mean, what's important- It's not random. To, no, and what's important to communicate about this is, uh, because people, well, I would know, it would be obvious. We're so disconnected that we, the only way to really start to identify these things is to consciously try to. You're so disconnected. Yeah. I, this used to shock me. Well, at first <clears throat> it shocked me, and then later on it became expected. Where I would get a client- and I've talked about this example many times. Right? I had a client who had heartburn every day. Every single day had heartburn mid-morning. Just took Tums, no problem. Mm -hmm. And I remember just because I'm on the outside. So for me, on the outside, sometimes things are a little clearer. I said, I wonder if it's your breakfast. And the guy's like, no, I eat the same thing for breakfast every day for the last <laughs> seven years. Well, how long have you been having heartburn? He's like, oh. Every day. Yeah, maybe seven a long time. Years. So I said, why don't we try not eating that and see if it made a difference? And it did. And he was like so, I remember it shook him to his core. He's like, <laughs> how could I not know? And then uh, other examples, this is not food related, but you get a client, they'd be doing an exercise. They're so disconnected from their body. This is, by the way, for any trainer who's watching this knows exactly what I'm talking about. They will ask you this question when you first start training someone who's never exercised. Where am I supposed to feel this? Where am I supposed to feel this? <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, where am I supposed to, like a tricep press down. 
where am I supposed to feel this? And you're like, oh, back here. And they'll be like, oh yeah. Like literally so disconnected that they don't even know that they don't, that they are feeling something. So when it comes to food, if you just pay attention and you go to your, and you know what you could do? You could set an alarm on your phone. That's, that's what I would suggest. So right after you're done eating, be like, okay, how do I feel? Write it down. Writing things down is good because it makes things conscious. Well, and then set an alarm two hours later and then be like, how do I feel? Be like, oh my God, I want to fall asleep. It's also deceptive because like to maybe that guy's point, maybe his breakfast was healthy. Like it was like eggs. Mm. It was, you know, it had some vegetables. It had uh, some fruit in there. And it was one of those combos or the, the sort of the combo of all three together that like produced that reaction. And it's like, you know, that's the tough part is, is to be able to parse out what exact food item is the one that's like not agreeable to your body. Cause that's been a problem. Like I've even found with myself, I'm like, well, I'm eating healthy, but I'm still reacting and this is still affecting me in a negative Such way. Such a good point, Justin, yeah. because there, and this is where I think there's kind of levels to this as far as like yeah. getting more and more in tune. Like I think the very first one is you become more obvious to like, oh wow, Jack in the Box really doesn't agree with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. right? So that's yeah. like the first phase of just like really starting to connect like, oh yeah, I guess every single time I eat that, I'm running to the mm. toilet like within the next mm. hour or two. But then the next one is the things that you you wouldn't expect yes. because it falls in the category of quote unquote healthy foods. And so you're like, oh, there's no way my, you know, banana walnut oatmeal that I have in the morning that's so good for me or my you know my eggs and turkey bacon and whatever that I have for breakfast like there's no way that's bothering me that's a that's a healthy breakfast or a healthy meal and so you're right I think that right away we tend to just go oh this is a healthy meal therefore it can't be the reason why that is right. but more often than not uh, I have found that with clients is when we finally get into the the root cause of whatever issue they have going on, many times it was a, a healthier food that they've been eating their entire life. And this that just doesn't agree with them anymore. You, you will lie yeah. to yourself. I've had uh, obvious examples where people will follow a diet that's popular. So like ketogenic diet or paleo or whatever. And they'll come to me and they'll say, hey, Sal, I've been following the keto diet now for four months. How long does it take to get over the keto flu? And I'd be like, keto flu? Well, yeah, you know, you switch over to ketones, how you feel like super lethargic and whatever. I'm like, it's been four months. Like, <laughs> you should have stopped this two weeks into it, you know, right. feeling that way. But because they thought it was supposedly healthy, they just push through. Now, extreme examples are people who exercise too much. They ignore that their body's overtrained in pursuit of this thing that's supposed to be healthy or good because of this maybe, maybe dysfunctional connection. So- Literally taking account to how you feel after and then a couple hours after and what you'll find and write it down and again, set the alarm and it sounds silly. I know right now you're listening to this. You're like, that's stupid. I would not know. No, trust me, do this. You will start to find things that are very strange. You'll actually start to question yourself. This is also quite normal. You'll say, am I creating this problem because I'm paying attention? Like I didn't notice this before. Right. You might actually even have that conversation, but over time you'll be able to individualize your diet and then what happens is you build the skill that doesn't go away. Once you, it's like the 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 parable of the man with the who was born with one eye, you know, sewn shut, and everybody's like, "Hey, you got this other eye? You can open." He's like, "No, no, I can totally see." Then someone goes over and cuts the threads, and he opens his eye, and it's like he can never go back again. Once you start to make this connection, this pattern, develop this habit, then it's hard to go back to ignoring your body. Then it becomes very obvious how you feel about you know certain foods. And then what happens this is the beauty is. You start to crave the foods that serve you better, and you start to not want the foods that don't serve you so well. Right. So it starts to become easier to eat in a way that's good for your body. So which building is, these better associations yeah. with food. Yes. Yeah. By the way, along the lines of what you said, Adam, with how some things are healthy and they don't make you feel good or whatever. All, so we got a message from somebody who used to make their own protein oatmeal. Yeah. So they would make whey uh, yeah. and oatmeal and uh, which a lot of people do, they'll mix protein powder and oatmeal and make it themselves. And this person was sold on by how good they felt afterwards. And this resonated with, uh, with uh, Creatures of Habit, Sorry, yeah, with, with with the company we work with. So that this is the this okay. So uh, last week I did a po I posted like you know a picture of me eating Creatures of Habit. I'm a, this has been like my go to breakfast every single morning. And somebody DM me and they were like. Do you count, I mean, because it's a scoop of protein, do you count this as, uh, you know, a, a perfect meal for you in the morning? I said, no, I don't. I said, because I, I've, I've told you guys on the podcast, I've said this before, like my goal is to not have to use any sort of supplements in order to get my intake. But 
to that point, I tell you what, that, that oatmeal, that protein oatmeal agrees with me in the morning better than almost, which is why I remember I gravitated towards that through, during my competing times. It was just, I felt so good. The way my body digests that, especially with the plant protein over the whey protein, mm. I just feel so amazing. So even though in a, in a perfect world, I would get that through like, and I told that person, I said, man, in a perfect world, I'd have four ounces of ground turkey mixed with four scrambled eggs and, you know, maybe some sort of like sweet potato or yam to go with it. That would be like, to me, the perfect breakfast that I make uh, without having to use any sort of a protein powder. But man, I tell you what, this is the the next best thing. And of course, it's so much easier. So it's like, yes, there's a, there's a better meal out there for me, I think, but for how I feel afterwards, the amount of grams of protein and how convenient it is, it's up there with- Well, so what I was going to say is this person used to make their own oat protein oatmeal. Then they went to Creatures of Habit. And then they said, the reason why I like Creatures of Habit is how I feel afterwards. Yeah. So I feel different with Creatures of Habit than I do with oatmeal and protein powder. And I think it's because of the digestive enzymes. That's my mm -hmm. guess. It's got to be. It has to be because yeah. I, I've done that before too. And I've even done plant protein mixed with oatmeal. And I still get, like, if I push it, I'll still get a little bit of blow. And I thought maybe, okay, maybe it's the oatmeal. Like, I can't push oatmeal too much. So, but the creatures of habit, I could do two packets at the same time. That's 60 grams of protein. It's a lot of protein. And I feel like, like I ate air in the sense that my gut feels good. I don't get the crashes. That's how I feel. Yeah. yeah and I think so. it's the day, cause, cause they don't just add protein. They add uh, digestive enzymes in there along with, um, I think vitamin some, D probiotics and, and, some pro and I probiotic. think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I oh. think it's the addition of those things that help the digestive process that make it so that I feel like I good versus when I would do it myself. And I would, if I pushed it too much, I didn't necessarily feel yeah. that great. No, it's, it's by far one, like, as far as like how I feel afterwards, again, uh, I'm, I'm always advocating for getting your, all your protein intake mm -hmm. through whole foods. It's the, the next best thing for me. I mean, it's just, it really, and it's just so convenient. It's easy. I mean, I, I, we got them here. I carry a bunch in my bag always. And so it's a quick, easy, easy digesting, feel amazing afterwards type of meal for me. All right. Today's giveaway maps anabolic advanced. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it here. Also subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section that you won free access to MAPS Anabolic Vans. We're also running a sale right now on our Correctional Exercise Pain Relieving Pro Mobility Programs. MAPS Prime, 50% off. MAPS Prime Pro, 50% off. And the bundle that includes both that's already discounted, you can also take an additional 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I have a, a funny sort of fun fact for Adam, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, well, you guys have seen Idiocracy, right? Yes. Have you seen it? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Great, fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, you have to see it. It's uh, like post-apocalyptic, but it's- Such a cult classic. Yeah. So, basically, yeah. like all the stupid people were the only ones left breeding, and so that's what <laughs> you end up with, right? So for this Brando. movie- <laughs> Yeah. So for this movie, uh, they were trying to figure out like- a kind of a futuristic way to dress them that was like dumb, but also it kind of worked. And so they're looking at shoes and they're like, let's go look through and, and see what's out there. And they found this startup company that had these really dumb looking shoes. Uh, and it turns out that they actually used the shoe and bought it and then used it in the movie and you can see them wearing it. And do you guys have any clue? Like, cause this was like before and this, what year? they're, they're concerned. The Hold Give on. Me the year. Give me the year. Yeah. So, okay. This was what? 1990. It's mid nineties. Gotta mid -90s, be mid ninety, Right. Okay. When did idiocracy come out? Maybe someone you have to look that up. up. Yeah. Uh, but so it's just a startup company and their, their concern was like, well, what if this brand actually takes off and becomes a thing? What, what is Andrew? Don't, you find don't it? tell me. Don't tell Hold me. Hold on. I want to. The movie came out in 2006? Yeah. Okay. Are so you serious? Like, oh, I thought it was yeah. the 90s. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right, 2006. Anyway, 2006. So what shoe company would it be? And do they exist now? They exist now. Oh, wow. I saw the answer here. Oh, oh bro. <laughs> Dude, the guy, they're wearing like orange Crocs. That's and they were like, right. this is the stupidest looking shoe. It's never going to take off. And then it's like in the movie and it's even more popular now than ever. It's I wish I remember who said this. I stole it from somebody, but I, I made me laugh so loud. I oh, grabbed my phone. And I said, I wrote this down because I had to share this with the guys. 
someone was, this guy was like kind of shitting on crypto. Uh -huh. And he's just like, listen, crypto is like Crocs. He goes, y'all think they look good. They don't. <laughs> 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 oh, hey, no, I, had yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. I mean, that's the shoe they uh, pick, you know? Well, They're like, this is the dumbest bro. thing Hold on ever. a second. Hold on a second. Raise your hand if you own a pair of Crocs. Be honest. Oh, you got a pair? I did. Uh, well, you I raised your hand too. Okay. No, I didn't buy a pair. I, thought you I, said just, I said I wanted to. I didn't oh. buy a pair. For, I just yeah. actually got some vans that are like uh, rubber, like like Crocs, that Dude. you can you can wear them in the water. So that's why I got them. Listen, I have a pair They're, for- I told you how I was going to use them. That's how I use them. Yeah, for taking out the trash. Yeah, like going in and out of the house. House, yeah, because right? yeah. I don't wear shoes. In the you ain't gonna catch me rocking them outside. No, no, but, like like in public with like a fit. But even though that's the, the move. Here's the deal. They are hell of comfortable. They are. I heard, I, I, I heard. Yeah. I told you what sold me on it was my nephew when we went up to Truckee. This was like earlier this past year, and uh, he has he wears the same size shoe as I do. And they were out, and I had to go take out the trash at the truck. So you just slipped them on. So I just slipped them on. And I went, uh, and he has the he had the ones that had like this kind of like fur. Like, that's what I got. In line. Yeah, yeah. I got the fur ones. <laughs> yeah, and I slid in. I'm like, oh, these are yeah. these are nice, right? Yeah. So yeah. so yeah. I mean, I, I'm all, but I mean, they become so popular to to wear. Like in the like I told you guys that Fitness 19 where I've been going in Morgan Hill. Are people wearing them work out? Oh, like no half way. the gym. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> Remember, I like this gym is like bomb. literally high school. Like I've oh. never been to a oh shit, a, is it Crocs and yes. wife beaters. Like oh, what's happening? Wow. Yes, that's the style for high school. We kids are right turning into idiots. Is they they all hey, rock their Crocs the to the, the gym? The beater's hey, cool. Hey, hey, hey. That's different. They all rock Cross their Crocs the to the gym, dude. So it's that a, is hella weird. Yeah, it's a thing. A hundred percent, it's a thing. That is. I mean, all, I mean, they wear them everywhere. It doesn't matter. That's probably why they wear them in the gym too. It's just like they. That's what they wear. Everywhere. I feel like if something sticks around, I don't see anybody squatting in them please but god they're doing would, everything else you hurt yourself though. well i mean there's kids doing a, doing a, yeah. they're doing them in those big old fat idea. air maxes which is not much different the worst shoe to squat in air yeah. maxes yeah you are yeah. going to hurt yourself yeah for sure no lateral nothing. you know what's crazy Support. is even as a young trainer i was so unaware of the foot stuff like it like that didn't come for me till way later so you know what i thought because we were never taught that you were so taught knee hip yep. upper yeah. body I, same here yeah. except i was you'd be at, on pillows at, like at, basically so i was accidentally smart with shoes and i'll tell you accidentally because i thought for something else so i used to tell my clients do not work out in air shoes nike air shoes but it wasn't because i thought the instability i thought that you me, could blow them yeah you could be strong <laughs> enough to blow <laughs> <laughs> but they'd explode. You know, but you'd have to lift the blow. Oh, I know. You'd have to, you'd have to <laughs> lift like a thousand pounds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I watch these kids and they're like deadlifting and squatting. And I just, I mean, the ankles are just Dude. like Ugh. caved Ugh. in so bad. I'm like, man, I, I had to bend that kid. Cringe. I had to be lifting like Dude, that. Dude, I got to no tell idea. you guys, I was, uh, I was online and there was this debate. I don't remember what it was, Facebook. And there was this debate over parenting. And I remember thinking this way and but uh now i'm i think differently because i understand differently so i remember when i would hear people when i was a kid say being a parent is the hardest job in the world it's the hardest job in the world so hardest and i remember as a kid being like really like <laughs> is it as hard as being an oil rig worker or <laughs> is it really as hard as inventing like you know innovative stuff that you know saves humanity like really i think you might be overplaying yeah. this a little bit right but now as a parent i realize why people say that it's not the hardest job in the world to be a parent. It's the hardest job in the world to be a good parent. Mm -hmm. Because in order to be a really good parent, you, you can't just check out. You have to grow as a person and you have to keep growing as a person. You have to constantly challenge yourself to be a better person and a better person. And as your kids grow up, you got to keep becoming a better person. You have to keep visiting your demons. You have to keep challenging yourself. You have to keep growing as a human being. And that's the hardest thing in the world because nobody wants to do that. Nobody yeah. wants to face their own shit. But if you care enough about your kids, that's what you end up doing. And now, now I understand why they say that. But being a parent, yeah, that's easy. Being a good parent, that's hard as hell. Yeah, I think it, uh, to add to that or steel man that, I think that it, it also takes an unbelievable level of self awareness, and that's a it takes a lot of self reflection. Not a lot of people like to do that. So to your point about like you're you're consistently having to grow and like the level of patience. 
you know, because you're communicating with a child, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's like, not only are you being faced with your own issues, insecurities, and the and the stuff that you, you're you harboring or that you've carried on from your, your, you know, being a child. So not only are you carrying that and you're now seeing a mirror and a reflection of yourself, but that mirror and a reflection is, is, is manifested in a two-year-old. Yeah. And so you have to not only be aware enough to catch your own bullshit there, but then you mm -hmm. also have to be patient enough and disciplined enough to work through it simultaneously communicating with a two-year-old mm, yeah. so i mean that when you think of it like that that really makes it go okay that's that is probably really difficult well, i mean if you want i mean people. you know when you realize that the unconscious uh patterns that you have and they're unconscious <laughs> meaning you don't know that you have them okay so when i say this and people go yeah well i know what no it's unconscious you don't know those unconscious patterns and, and thought processes you have you pass on to your kids through your actions without realizing it. So if you really want to be like the best parent ever, you have to constantly try to face, turn your face towards the darkness. You have to constantly look where you don't want to look and say to yourself, I don't know. So I got to keep looking. I don't know. I got, that is hard. It sucks. It's really, really challenging. And uh, that's what makes it so damn hard. And it's never ending. So, and that's why I said being a good parent, because if you really care about your kids, you're always asking yourself this all. It reminds me of when I was a trainer, except times a million. Like when I was a trainer, what same, this is what we all had in common. What made us good trainers wasn't that we were the smartest or were the most educated or it was because we cared so much about our clients. We, even though we were all top salespeople, all the three of us in this room broke records, but we all asked ourselves the same question constantly. Am I really doing a good job? Why aren't these yeah. people really maintaining this Are result? Are they really bought in or yeah. is this just all work? And that means you have to go back, even though you're number one in the company, selling more training than anybody, you got all these clients, you got to keep looking back and be like, I, I'm not doing something right. Yeah. I'm not doing, you got to keep questioning yourself and then reinventing yourself and learning. That's not hard. That's ego crushing. Now, times a million when you're raising a kid, because it's not just about being a trainer, it's about like everything I do. <laughs> I mean, how I think about things, yeah. how I discipline, how I love, how one I- One little learn. volume notch, like crank up, like it's that- uh, equal reaction that you see like visibly like happen like real time. And it's like, Oh my God, I have to like adjust and, and monitor totally. my own tone, you know, and just the way that I'm like speaking all totally, the time. So, totally. Did yeah. you have like a thing this weekend or something? No, it's, just con came, oh. <laughs> it's just constant. It's constant because I have, I have this wonderful trifecta at home, right? I have, I mean, look, all kids are challenging, but what do they say? Right. The hardest ages are infant, toddler, Teenagers. Everybody says that. I got all three <laughs> at home. So I'm like, you know, under fire constantly. And um, so it's a challenge all the time, right? And so I, I ha I'm, I'm always asking myself like, okay, how can I be better? How can I be less reactive? And I think I'm doing a good job, but I want to keep making sure that I'm not passing on my own shit, that I'm, you know, reacting and acting in ways that are going to raise good, self-sufficient, loving, secure human beings. And I'm going to mess up and I always mess up. Everybody does, but it's like this process. And as I do this process, I look, I look at it. Sometimes I'm like, this sucks. Like it was way easier to just not do this shit, you know, yeah. hard as hell. Sometimes you can get bad eggs. Uh, yeah, that's and, true. Uh, yeah. I have to bring up a story just because, uh, it was like both kind of sad and hilarious at the same time. Okay. Uh, so like there's, there's a bit of rumors, I guess that was, uh, being spread at, uh, Ethan's school about me. And now wait, this, wait, 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 about you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bro, Not about got, Ethan. Hey, you got me. You got, you got some high school drama going on in your life. High school drama, dude. I thought it was out. You know, like it's been what? decades. And what? then pull me back. Uh, Are you going to go fight some kids? Yeah, oh, I'm going to go bro. like give this kid a swirly. What? What? Wait, Seriously, wait, dude. Wait. How you got yourself in high school drama right <laughs> now, dude? Know, dude. What's I the rumor? <laughs> okay, so this guy... <sighs> So, you know how, like, every group of friends, they have, like, kind of the one that's on the outside, kind of the fringe, trying to make his way in and, like, yeah. you know, trying to find an angle somehow. And uh, so he's been kind of, I guess, ghosted a bit. And, like, they've all kind of moved on because, you know, the kid has a bit of issues. And I... I I could have called this from day one. Like, you know, when you're a parent and you just watch kids interact and like they're over and you're like, okay, like the one bad apple. You here's, can see. here's yeah. my issue. Okay. I knew this ahead of time in kindergarten is all started all the way back there. Oh my God. This kid, I found out watched walking dead. 
He, his dad let him watch Walking Dead. And you're trying to tell me I didn't have any kind of like psychological trauma, you know, for this kid and like what he comes up and conjures in terms of like, if somebody pisses him off, he's like, oh, slit your throat. Oh my God. Like, like crazy stuff. I can't right? wait to hear what he said. About Dude. Yeah, no, me okay. Too. So Justin's you know, a big Bud Light drinker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's a Bud it's Light these, chugger. It's all these Photoshop pictures of Justin <laughs> drinking Bud Light all over Party. the campus. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so good at, oh, I <laughs> like the problem. Bro, he yeah. loves you should, you, should have, you should have told me this right now. Yeah. He loves it. Dude, he drinks okay. it all the time. It's better. Okay, right. so okay, so he, I guess, I mean, he's feeling salty, I think, and left out. And uh, like Ethan had a, a, a party and had it at our, our house with his friends uh, for his birthday. And he didn't know. One of, one of Ethan's friends... Like this kid, I'm not even gonna say his name because I don't want to. You know, I hope not. He's a, he's a minor. He's a kid. <laughs> yeah, I can tell Justin's trying hard not to be good, not to revert. Back I want to punk him, to- dude. I want to punk him. But Here's I'm his name. Here's his address. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Meet me after school. Yeah. So he he actually was in a class with like one of Ethan's other friends. He didn't know that friend was Ethan's friend, if that makes sense. And so, so he's talking got- with him. He's just like, you know. Bah. Um, yeah, so, and he was like, oh, you know, Ethan and his dad's like totally rich, dude. And like, you know, you know, I know how he made his money though. Uh-oh. You know, oh, when COVID started, dude, he started selling meth. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. I what? Like, wow. I'm like, I'm a meth dealer? Wow. Like, you can't even get like a classier drug? Like, you meth? know, like, what? Meth? Like, like, you think I live in a shack and I'm like cooking well, meth and, hold on. And, and like everybody's, I'm selling to people that have no teeth. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, hold on. Let's that break this just, down. Yeah. Adam has the most experience in this field. <laughs> 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 the drug, the drug don't, dealing field. Don't bring this on to me, bro. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> How did you get? If you didn't know Justin, but you knew he was a drug dealer, what drug would be his, his drug that he would deal? Would it be meth? Based off his said? old teeth, maybe. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Not no more though. Now his pearlies now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He he's no also too, he's kind of too jacked to be okay. a meth dealer. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no. Meth, meth heads are skinny, hey, bro, and enough, high strung. Bro, to be, to Dude, exactly. They're like like crackheads. So I know? mean, uh, did he have anything to follow up with it? Like how that? He just dropped that like that. He just dropped it like that, and then was like, and, and so this kid had stayed at our house, right? And for Ethan's part, he didn't know that. And so yeah. he's just like, he's like, what? He's like, no, I stayed at their house. They're nothing like that. There's no way. And but he's like defending me and stuff. And he's like, well, that's what I heard. Man. Maybe it's his uh, secret basement. That's why. You do have a secret yeah, basement yeah. door, which yeah. that's kind of, you know what I'm saying? If you don't know. That's the sex room yeah, now. Nobody knows that. Yeah, if you don't. dungeon. Like, don't talk about yeah, that. <laughs> um, you, know, you got one of those hideaway walls, you know what I'm saying? Where you push the wall and it opens up and now you have this, this, this stairwell. So yeah. Like, yeah, the rubber ponies down there. Yeah, <laughs> All that weird stuff. yeah he didn't know about that, bro. That's, what a out of isn't left, that weird? What an out of left field, yeah. like weird rumor. Yeah, a meth like dealer. Imagine if you're a kid like uh, their age, right? He's thirteen, and you're talking shit about like somebody's like dad and like their family. Yeah. Like their whole family would come beat the shit out of you. Yeah, like that's just how it was <laughs> when we grew up. <laughs> what are you trying to say, bro? <laughs> I'm just saying, that's. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, watch your P's and Q's, kid. Oh, wow. You know, you do go beat up his dad. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Well, I, I was going to tell him if I ran, I'm like, dude, you're, you know, your dad's my best customer. Yeah. And I just walk away. <laughs> yeah. Do you know why your mom left your dad? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do some shit. Exactly. Such a, you know, random, random, such a random. So random. That's why I, all I could do is laugh. I was like, this is the most hilarious wow. thing I've ever heard. Oh, my God. You know, and it's wow. it, it's total just like some weird. It, it, you got to play it. You just left it. out, and, you know, you can, I, you can see, psychoanalyze this whole thing. But like, I dude. haven't had anything like that with my kids, but my, my kids did have people, like their friends, pull up my pictures on uh, Google. And like my like where my shirt is off and stuff, and then show my kids or whatever. My daughter got super embarrassed. Oh. Like, <laughs> Put your hey. shirt on. Yeah, I'm like, why don't you? You know what I told my daughter to do? <laughs> is your dad a Chippendale? Yeah. Yeah. No, you know what I told my yeah. daughter? I said, when they do that. I want you to Google a picture of their dad and then put show them that because that will be more embarrassing. Well, at least my dad doesn't look like this. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's right. Yeah, you fat fuck. We're we're, we're, uh, we're such good parents. I'm actually no, I'm actually surprised that the both of you have not had more stories like this because you guys have both have kids in this, uh, you know, 
social media era and, and high young. school. Really? That's it, not, it's uh, such a teenager thing. I yeah. just realized. This I feel like is, it's, this I think it's middle school, stuff. high school. No, college. College, I don't give a fuck about No, 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 not that I care. I'm saying if you look this at- This is a, a high school thing. If you, yeah, I know that. No, I know that. What I'm saying is demographically, if you look at the age of our audience- um, I don't think, I think a small percentage is under the college age. I don't think we have a ton of like middle school. Oh yeah. But that doesn't matter to me that I'm talking about. You think they just find out and it's spread. Yeah. Like uh, the, even more reason why they would tease you. They're not into it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they get to college. They're more likely to find someone who actually listens to the show. They're like, Oh my God, Sal. And they're all cool about it. I feel like in high school, oh, middle school. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like a, a way to tease about your dad totally. or make fun of him, stuff like yeah. that. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I think that's, you know, the worst is I remember there was a kid in school. Your dad's an influencer. Yeah, <laughs> the worst. I, I had a kid. Did you yeah, guys have I a kid? I would have felt more gross. Yeah. You're you right. You're like, I'd rather be a meth dealer. I'd rather be a meth dealer. Yeah. I'm Walter White, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your dad sells supplements. Have yeah. you, okay. So did you guys have a kid like this in school where there was always that one kid whose mom was hot. Yeah, yeah. That, I felt bad for that kid. Yes. Because his mom would come pick him up. That's how, that's, that what, I mean, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like, that's like a, that's like a positive thing, right? You got a, you got a good look. Not if that's your mom. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm, oh, but it's a yeah. positive thing. That's what I'm saying that yeah. why you guys aren't made fun of like that is it's, it's a, obviously a positive sure. thing. You had all this success through social media, whatever you want to call it, right? But uh, kids are just mean like that. Yeah. And I remember my, my buddy who had a had that mom, dude. Then everybody, mm -hmm. I mean. She was hot. Oh, stay over. Yeah. And then they'd make all inappropriate oh, comments. Oh, yeah. yeah. Football games, <laughs> the whole game. Everybody would be <laughs> talking about her and stuff like that and looking pictures? at her. and Everybody. Dude, that's the most common one. Oh, man. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I want to talk about a new study that came out. Love that we're gonna change the subject. Yeah. Did you? I want you nutrition. to address. Can you address the one that? That's what. That's what I'm. Okay. Gonna, okay. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Here's how stupid. Uh, this is how I hate. I don't want to say it this way. Here's how. Fine. I'll say it this way. Here's <laughs> how dumb most consumers are. Okay. So if you're if you're watching and listening to this, unfortunately, you fall into this category. And here's why. Because they keep relying on your stupidity, and I'm hope hopefully by listening to Mind Pump, yeah. we're helping you not be so dumb so that they, don't, <laughs> they can stop doing this. Because I keep seeing this, and it keeps annoying me. Yeah. And then I'm like, you know why they do this? Because people fall for it. Yeah. Here's the title of the, the article. Worst. The title says, "Refined carbs and red meat are driving the global rise in type two diabetes." Study says. Now, when you read the study, here's the bot. Here's the end of the study. Our mo modeling. This is by the by the way. This is the the actual authors. This of the is study. quotation. This is quote from the authors of the study. Our modeling approach does not prove causation, and our findings should be considered an estimate of risk. In other words, <laughs> our study doesn't show <laughs> anything. Means nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Means means absolutely yeah. nothing. So annoying. Now, here's the here's why would they do this? Well, first off, people share stupid shit like this. Here's the part that I see. If we look a little deeper, it's not that clickbaity for people to say refined carbs, refined carbs, sugar. It is clickbaity to keep saying that red meat mm -hmm. is causing some of these issues. Now, I, before somebody pulls up studies where they do show causation, here's what the studies show. Processed meats, processed carbohydrates, those are the things that they're connecting to type 2 diabetes. Now, mm -hmm. is it because of the meat? Is it because of the sugar? Kind of, but here's where most of the problem is. It's because heavily processed foods make us overeat. And I can't say this enough. Things and ingredients that are used in heavily processed foods, that the things that make them so irresistible, that make them hyper palatable, that make you overeat them, all those things, which include salt, uh, preservatives, uh, artificial flavorings, Fat. sugars, fats, um, and, uh, and refined carbohydrates and processed type meats, all those things are often put into heavily processed foods to make you overeat. And most, not all, but most of the health risks that come from eating those foods is because they make you overeat. And there's other studies, very good ones, that show people eating processed foods, but because they limit their calories, they actually get improvements in health markers and blood markers. Now, I'm not saying eat heavily processed foods but just eat enough, you know, the right calories, you know, if it fits your macros type of deal, because they will make you overeat. You will white knuckle it. Eventually you'll go over. Plus you'll feel like shit. So it's more complicated. But the vast majority of the problems that we're seeing with uh, modern societies is the result of overeating, which is the result of these engineered foods that make you overeat. So anytime mm -hmm. you see these studies that connect this, that, and the other, always ask yourself, is it because heavily processed foods contain a lot of that? And the answer is almost always yes.
Yeah, That's the thing you I wonder because, like, even I was playing poker this weekend, and this guy brought up that he was changing his diet and trying to be more healthy, and so he was reducing his red meat intake and like changing it over to fish and chicken and it was, i was like oh that's interesting i was like where'd you read you know about uh you know red meat and 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 it's it's harmful uh effects and so he he didn't really have a good answer like there was no like definitive study or like something like it was just in the pop culture yeah. like still and i think that it's it's one of those things they've done such a good job of like just you they'll throw it in this they'll throw it in that yep. like all and just combine it with all these other studies just so that way it looks Bad. Yes, absolutely. It is. Uh, um, if if you simply did this, two things right here. If you simply avoided processed foods and you tried to eat your body weight in grams of protein, I'll say this for the vast majority of people. In fact, I'll challenge somebody watching this right now. Most people won't be able to do this. It's hard to get fat doing that. It is. It's just hard to get fat doing what I said. Not eating heavily processed foods. And eating, by the way, that includes protein powders, bars, and stuff like that, okay? So all whole natural foods <clears throat> and hitting your body weight and protein, it's hard to get fat. Now, could you get fat doing that? Yes, you, but for the vast majority of people, if you do that every single day, what you're going to find is, I can't eat any more food. Oh, I just feel too yeah. stuffed. Oh, this is just... Now, you're not going to be shredded doing that, but it's actually hard to get fat doing so. So, And I, I make that challenge because I want to see people actually give it a shot. And I don't mean just one day or two days, like do it every single day and then report back. And what most people are going to find is, man, that sucks. I can't, I can't overeat doing that. It's really, really uh, challenging, yep. you know, thing to do. I mean, so. wasn't that why the Atkins diet took off and did so well totally. originally? I mean, I, that was my experience when we uh, experimented with the ketogenic diet. Like I was blown away by actually how difficult it was to eat that much. I mean, you just, you eat enough of the high protein and and fat like that, and you just are so satiated. It's the it's the processed carbohydrates that make me want to keep eating mm -hmm. and eating and eating, and it's uh it's difficult for to to actually gain weight in that in that case. Yeah. Or if you have a high metabolism like I did at that time, to to keep up with the amount of calories that I needed just to sustain my mass was almost impossible. You know that actually reminds me of another uh, topic. <clears throat> um, so I read this article, and they're connected. So I'll, I'll I'll explain why it might sound like it's not, but they are. I read this article recently that one of the founders of AI technology at Google, he just left. He just quit. Do you know why he quit? Hmm. Because of the dangers oh of God. his invention. Oh, God. So he literally left because he said, I don't. So he created it and then he left it for all he's of like, us to I, uh, deal with. He's like, I don't like. Cool. He goes, I don't like this potential. I can't. Like, basically, my conscious won't let me stick around and be a part of this. So I got to bounce. Wow. He said that we're super close to the point where, um, in fact, Gary Vee just talked about this. We're very close to the point where you're not going to know whether or not something's real, uh, video, audio, image, or the like. So anything you see, yeah. they're like, we're so close to being the point where you're not going to know if it's real or not. Gary Vee made the point, and this I, I would love your opinion on this, Adam, where blockchain technology, we were connecting it to money, this and that, but we also said, Brilliant technology. We just don't know where it's going to be most useful. Gary Vee thinks this is where it's going to be most useful. Oh, to verify something is real or that's not. That's it. That if it doesn't have blockchain on it, that you're going to be like, it's fake. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that's a brilliant theory. I mean, this is- Totally was, right. I, I, I'm, I liked the theory that I heard about the NFTs uh, in slash blockchain technology coupled with luxury watches, you know, that I'm into that stuff. And I'm like, oh, what an incredible way- to verify that there's a massive market on reselling, uh, you know, used luxury watches, but one of the biggest fears and what you pay thousands of dollars more just to have the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Like, so like, a, like a watch, if you, if you do not have the original box and original uh, paperwork, then they which, can't verify it. Right? Yeah. I mean, they still can. There's ways for a, a place to still verify it, but without that authentication like that with it, you can't you can't fetch nowhere near as much money. Whereas if you actually had you know blockchain attached to it with an NFT, now you know. Yeah, it's it's one off like that. That would be extremely powerful for that market. So I definitely see places where. Yeah. So Gary V's like, yeah, that's how we're gonna have to. That's the only way we're gonna know if yeah. a video. That makes a lot of sense for real. yeah content creators, producers, artists. You know to be able to at least verify. Like I literally created this. It wasn't like some random AI. You know, it's funny you bring this up uh, that, you know, we're already starting to see this distrust in, in media to like, so, so bad. I was, so Vicky was here today. Right. It's, and so the lowest it's ever been. It has um, to be, yeah. Vicky's like, Hey, were you at the game? 
And I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, oh yeah. she's like, Andy, Andy totally said that somebody uh, photoshopped you and it was AI that was, that was put you at the game. I'm like, <laughs> what? She's like, yeah, he swore that there's no way Adam would be there and not be wearing a jersey because the, the camera, one of the timeouts, like did like a, a zoom in, caught me and Katrina wasn't with me and she was going to get drinks, right? So he's like, Katrina wasn't with them and there was no jersey on him and stuff like that. That wasn't him. Fake so, news. Yeah, it was, yeah, no, I'm like, that's where we've gotten to the point right now where it's like, you see something even on television you might be like, no, nah, that can't be real. Somebody doctored that to, to make wow. it look like he's there. Wow. I want to get back that's to that, Adam, I have a question uh, with you, but I wanted to, to kind of close the loop with uh, what I was talking about. So <clears throat> with um, with AI coming into the forefront and, and we're entering into this kind of new era, um, I was thinking about this after I read the article about the, the, the founder or one of the developers of AI. And I thought, man, what an existential decision we're going to have to make, right? Yeah. Something where we're going to have to choose to go in a direction and the direction we choose is going to affect everything in a big way. And uh, well, first off, that choice is going to be do I choose human or do I choose machine? Do I choose human for content, products, food, services, or do I go with machine? Now, the reason why you would choose machine is it's going to be faster, better, more convenient, cheaper. cheaper. Yeah. The reason why you would choose human is to keep humans uh, you know, valuable, relevant, yeah. relevant to provide meaning. It's kind of similar to when you choose like, uh, you know, local farmers markets versus mm -hmm. whatever people will do that. Right. It's like, okay, you're going to have to make this choice. And I thought to myself, like, have we ever had to do this in the past? We've already done this and we've already been paying the, pr the price for it. We made the decision a long time ago, which was an existential one to eat fake food versus real food. What are the consequences of that? Obesity. Mm -hmm. We've already done that. We've now been choosing real connection in person with fake connection, internet. We're choosing internet because it's faster, cheaper, all that stuff. What are the consequences of it? Loneliness is at, at its highest levels. I hope people are smart enough moving forward where they say to themselves, yeah, I know that's going to be better. I know it's going to be more entertaining. I know it's going to be tastier. It's going to be faster. It's going to be cheaper. But if we as humans don't choose human, we're screwed. We're going to kill ourselves. We're going to really, really be in a, in a bad place. And I think this is a huge, this is going to be the biggest uh, like fork in humanity that we've encountered in, in since, I don't know. Yeah. The invention it, of fire. It's crazy. You know, I, I trip on sometimes is like, was Ted Kaczynski really wrong? Oh, oh God. With what he thought. Yeah. Well, what he thought, obviously the <laughs> methods I'm due to read, I'm due to read his okay. manifesto again. Cause I remember but, the first time I read, it, I was like, Holy shit. This is like, he definitely was seen way into the future with all this stuff. But I mean, it's, it's a, it's an existential crisis. It is something that like we need to stop and really assess. Like, what are we doing? Like, where where is this going? Like, what is this really where we want to take humanity? It's a humanity crisis. Yeah, because I mean, again, we've we've made this decision so many times. Like, easier versus harder. Do I walk or do I drive? Do I take the stairs or do I whatever? Do I order food to my door or do I drive there and go get it? And easier almost always wins, but the consequence of such tends to be oftentimes quite negative. I get where there's value in easier. Uh, you know, sometimes that's much val more valuable, but we choose it when we don't necessarily need to. And what's happened is we're lonelier, sicker, fatter, more depressed, more anxious, less connected than ever before. So, you know, pretty soon, when I say pretty soon, I mean like in the next five to 10 years. Yeah, within the decade. We're going to have to make this decision across the board. Do I choose this or do I choose human? And I think we're going to have to choose human. Otherwise, we're going to go down a path where I don't know if we're going to be able to come out of. All right. So back to what you were saying, Adam. You were at the game. You were on the floor, right? What yeah. is that called? That's a yeah, floor seats. Floor seats. Okay. Yeah. And you're doing this is playoffs. Yeah. yeah. How many of these games are you going to? Uh, I'm gonna go. Well, I'm gonna go all the way through. So as long as they're in, I'm gonna continue to go. That's expensive. Yeah, it's been. It's been. Is it uh, like real expensive? Yeah. Um, this season, I probably could have got a car. What? Like uh, a like a like a. Like a shitty car? No, like a nice car. What? Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's how much they cost? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I have to say- It's a commitment. I have to I want to ask you about that. Because <clears> you, I actually- You, you know, have an interesting relationship with money. You went from like, uh, you didn't have money growing up, then you made money and you spent it like crazy. Then you, you built businesses. Then you did this one. You had a kid. 
Then you became like super uh, conscious and tight with money. Yeah. Now you're spending on stuff like this. Like what's yeah, the evolution? You were stacking for a long time. Yeah. What's the evolution? Yeah. I would say that I've been um, really conservative with my money for the last at least five to eight years. I would say definitely when Max came along, Katrina would tell you that I became a miser when, when, uh, when he came along. Um, I told you just recently on the podcast that I had, I've been reading that, that book die with zero. And there was just, there's certain parts of it that, uh, resonated with me that I just started to evaluate like some of my purchases and things a little bit different. Like I, like you said, I think I, I was on one extreme <clears throat> and then I swung to the other extreme and then I kind of went back and then now I'm kind of trying to find somewhere in the middle ground. And really what it came down to is this, like there's, there's a couple of things that I, in the last like two years that I told myself I was, I was going to buy myself. One of those was like a really, really cool, like exotic car or, or something like a, like a total like waste of money for somebody else, but something that I wanted right for a long time. The other was a, a specific watch that I, I told myself I would do when I reached this mile. So both those things I haven't purchased. I've been very hesitant to go do it, even though obviously I have the, the money to go do something like that. I've been like, ah, do I really need it? Do I really want it right now? Like, and, and both those things, I, they're always there for me to go get if I really want it. There's comes a time in my life for like, literally if like you guys all did it, I'd be like, oh, okay, let's all go do it together. And that experience, I think I could, you would, you would push me over the edge to probably get it right now. I've been like, eh, whatever about it. But then you have something like this where, uh, you know, my favorite team, is uh, in the playoffs. Uh, they're they're towards the tail end of this dynasty of core players that have been together. Who knows if this is the last season? If it's not the last one, it's one of the last in the next few years where this could be a, a possibility. And anybody that's a sports fan knows that you know you could be a fan of a team and go in a two, three, four decade drought of oh, yeah. even making the playoffs, much less make a championship run. And I thought to myself, like, man, <clears throat> yeah, I could keep stacking those chips and build the bank account more and what and all the all the stuff that I'm investing in, stuff like that, and make even more money. But then what happens in like five to ten years when that that's, you know, I'm four X more rich and I look back and I go, shit, I missed the time when they were making a championship run to go and I didn't and I didn't do it when I absolutely can afford to do it and it doesn't set me back to go do something like that and Katrina was really surprised because I I like told her I'm like we're, we're gonna go and she's like really she's like you, you want to spend that like everything and I'm like you know what like how mad are we gonna be in in three years from now when you know we're worth however much more and their warriors aren't there and they don't go there for you know, don't get to the playoffs for three more decades and we miss that experience. And those other things, like I was saying earlier, the car, the watches, the shoes, even stuff like that, like that, that's always there. There's always, always those things, and I have access to that whenever I want, where something like this, an experience that I have a, a small window potentially to do. And it's, it's definitely like bucket list type stuff for me. Like that's, uh, uh, it's unbelievable. It's very, very memorable for me. And so, yeah, it's something recently that I've justified so the spin. This, so this is great because there's, there's, uh, you know, I hope oh, there's yeah. a kid listening right now who identifies with you, <clears throat> who is going to learn uh, from some of this. So I want to go a little deeper because, um, by the way, the data on this is, is very clear. Money spent on things brings people almost no real value. Uh, money spent on experiences is the best way to spend money. Money and time, um, excuse me, time and experiences. Study, the studies show this. If you spend money on giving yourself more time, you get lots of value from it, or if you spend money on experiences. But there's, this, this goes deep with you because it's not just the basketball. Like if I went to a, a playoff game with the Warriors, it would be a great, fun experience. But it doesn't mean to me what it means to you at all. Yeah, yeah. And then the nice things, the watch and the car, there's some meaning there too for you, but the meaning's different. Mm -hmm. So, what was the meaning of the car and the watch versus the meaning <laughs> of the of the game, and why is the game so much more valuable? Forget the fact that it may not happen, you know, or whatever. Uh, like when I hear you talk about basketball, it definitely sounds very different, and it comes from a different place than when you talk about the fact that you want nice things. Sure, that comes from it, you know. So, sure. What, what is that? So the basketball is there's there's multiple things there right obviously i played when i was younger i also didn't continue to play and maybe i could have i chose to work instead and make money and so there's a there's a there's a part of basketball where there's like this 
little bit of an empty hole there of like I never kept playing to see and not to say that I would have ever been anything great it's just that you know in high school I chose to even stop playing to to work more so I have that then you have uh my wife who was a division one collegiate level basketball player like she's really she was really good she loves basketball as much as you do if not right more. Uh, yeah as much right so you know the fact that that's something that we sh we share together we met on the basketball court like that's kind of the very first time we ever crossed paths so we have this bond around that. So not only is it really close to home for me, but it's also a shared experience that I can have with her uh, that will forever remember. So that to me trumps the other two things. The watch would be a close second only because that has history and a story. I've told you, I've told the story before about the whole uh, Rolex thing with the company and how they took it away the year that I was making a run for first place. And that was like, just like ripped my heart out as a young 20 year old. And so that's forever been a thing for me. And then every watch that I've ever purchased for myself represents a very important milestone in my life, financial. Um, and I reached that a couple of years back for the last piece. Like I had this like laid out, like, okay, this is my last time piece. That's the big one. It's the final one. When I reached this, you know, X amount goal that I had that I get, and that was two years ago when I hit that and I didn't, I still didn't buy it just because the market's crazy right now. And I'd be paying 15, $20,000 over market value for this piece that I want. And I know that it, it'll it'll still be there. I like it, I I will eventually get it, but it's less important at this time. And so that's why the you know spending that kind of money that somebody else might think is like crazy and ridiculous um, is uh, something that I've justified doing and and I, worth every penny for me. Like yeah. absolutely, the the experience to do that and that it's always an. I feel like the watch would be a better gift for someone to get you. I feel like that would be a very cool I would, gift. I would love one of you guys yeah. to get me. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I would love one. Well, no, you know why? Because <laughs> definitely because it's cool. It's got some meaning for you. Yeah, but yeah. But it pales what you just explained, your experience with your wife. It doesn't compare. Like you and your wife doing this thing, you'll remember this. Yeah, so no, that's too. why you're, you're. That's something that for sure makes perfect sense. I mean, I think what's neat about it, though, there, like that walk, that's a, that, that's a big thing for me. It means a lot. Yeah. I have the ability to delay gratification yeah. there and go like, oh, I'll wait till the market yeah. shifts. I can get it later. I don't need to have it right this moment. I know it's something I will get as a like a milestone thing. So, but this right, what's happening right now with the the basketball season? Like, I mean, that could go away next year, and then they cannot return to playoffs for twenty years, and then I'm going to be like, oh, great, you know, I missed that opportunity when both Katrina and I had were we had a, a kid old enough that we can drop him off at uh, Nana's house and she has no problem watching him for the night. Her and I could head out the same Plus, day. It sounds like what a great date for the two of you. Oh, you it's all love it. It's, yeah. it's such yeah. every, <laughs> although Katrina will tell you like her, the, the night's always better when we win. It's what she'll, <laughs> <laughs> it's, she, she'll say the that drive home. Yeah. 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 A, she gets all, silence, everything. Everything. Oh yeah. yeah. Warrior, Warriors win. And she's oh, got, man. she gets a big old grin on her face. She goes, Oh, I can't wait for tonight. Tonight's going to be so good. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I'm like, it's not that much worse when it, when we lose. But although I'm, a, I'm definitely, uh, I, I, I'm not as happy as I am when we, when we win for sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, I find, you know, isn't that funny that your, your relationship to money is like, uh, boy, it's like food relationship or relationship to like other things. It's like it, it, there's a healthy relationship and then there's an unhealthy relationship. And as you get older, you kind of start to develop this like more. I don't know, balance. It's where you start to yeah. see, like, well, this actually fine -tune is... fine-tune it, yeah. Yeah, this is not... Like, I'm not just getting this because I'm going to look cool or I'm getting this because I think I'm supposed to. This actually means something to me. And then you... you, It's like you create balance that way, kind of naturally. So I, mm -hmm. I try and... Like, when I make these decisions on what I'm going to buy or not, I really challenge myself on, is this truly for myself or is it for everybody else? Is this really something... Wow, what is, a good question. Is this really something that, you know... I want self and and to me the true test is that is I don't give a shit to share it, you know. Uh, you mean you obviously I was caught on TV and people share share stuff like that, but like ain't nobody know how many times I've been to the games. This I don't need to I don't need to share and tell people how many times or where I'm sitting or what you know I'm not flashing the the ticket prices and the seats and stuff like that. And so yeah. that's for me, you know what I'm saying. And like so if I'm if I'm doing something, the true test to me is like, do I need to share it with anybody else? No, I, you know who I need to share it with the person who I'm there with and that moment that experience and like totally. that, that that's when I know that this is not about anybody else.
else. It's about me versus when I make other purchases where I feel like, oh, I can't wait to show this off yeah. or let people see this. Like that's that's when I know it's like, okay, well, this is not really coming from the right place. Yeah. For me, it's uh, I like um, spending a lot of money on uh, dining experiences. <clears throat> I love really, really fun, interesting dining experiences. And then vacation. Uh, if I'm on vacation, I want it to be as like easy as possible because – I hate traveling. I hate flying. I hate flying with little kids. I hate all that crap. So if I can make it easy, you know, then that's something I would spend money on. I think we're all pretty similar, believe it or not. Even though we're very different about what things we are, and I think we we have we all have a pretty similar, I yeah. think, relationship with the uh, with money and spending things like that. I'd say probably Doug is probably the closest to me with like his, he has a little bougie side to him that he. His espresso machine. Yeah. It, right and, but you know what though? Again, you could always tell. You like, can tell the future. That you could also it. tell He's though. Into, though yeah. yeah, no, you could tell how genuine it is. It's not, he, I, the, the way I always find out that, is I, yeah. I, I see it later or something like, hey, what did you get that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got that for myself. You know, I really like it. Like you don't go around talking about it or bragging about it or sharing it whatsoever. It's because, you know, it's, it's truly for himself, but. You know, I do know he's got similar like bougie taste when it comes to things like that. But everybody's really conservative for the most part, yeah. I think. Yeah. Justin, least, I what's think. yours? Vacation, I would say. Right? Vacation. Um, I think it's too. It's enhancing. Just uh, like I, I really wanted to spend money on, like, if I'm at the house, like I want my house to be the place where people come and like the friends come oh, and like. Yeah. Hmm. So we've had a lot of the kids and friends over a lot. So we have a big enough house where it's like. You know, it doesn't feel like I'm crowded and uh, when, when they have their friends over and so we can do things and open that up. And so, yeah, so I'm actually like planning on building a pool there. And so that's another thing to kind of enhance just our local environment uh, and, and be able to throw parties and have people over. I'm just it's more like of a social thing for me, like if I want to have like a really nice um spot where people can just hang and chill and um you know have have a good uh, I'm like that too. Yeah. I'm I'm very much so like that. Have you already know are you um or have you guys already hosted way more at this house than you did at the previous yeah. Way more. Way more yeah, already. We didn't host it all. We didn't host it all. I know you did. Last place. Yeah. It just was tough because it was nice when everybody was outside, but like you'd have to really bank on good weather for that. And it just was always like a total coin toss. No, that for house me. was not conducive for for hosting like yeah, the way you are just, right now. Yeah. And there was a slope and there was just like yeah. dangerous stuff everywhere for the kids. <laughs> and I was always like, ah, oh, you know, watching out for everybody else's kids because mine were fine, you know, climbing around. But like, you know, it's just, it was a little chaotic. So to make it less chaotic and then be able to see everybody and then have like setups. So I have like cornhole and stuff outside. And so kids are playing with that. There's like, you know, I, we got, um, we got like ramps and stuff for their BMX and they can do that. Oh, that's and awesome. It's just like one th little piece here and there that I add, like enhances, uh, everybody's Dude, fun. Last, last summer I went swimming for the first time in a saltwater pool versus chlorine. What a difference. Yeah. yeah. What a yeah, that's, difference. That's what everybody shifted to. Yeah, because chlorine is like you get out and you smell it and it messes up your skin and it just you know changes the color of your bathing suit. My, <laughs> my skin yeah. actually feels better after getting out of the like a the like that, like, yeah, our hot tubs are you know, both the hot tubs that we have at the Truckee and Park City House are both salt water, but my home hot tub is not. It's an older one. It's chlorine. And it's like as much as I love it. I, I always have to like scrub afterwards. So I do, you know, it's like nine o'clock at night, Katrina and I want to oh, go get in the jacuzzi. Sometimes we won't because we're like, ah, I don't want to, I, I just got out of the shower. Mm. Just got out of the shower. I don't want to get in the jacuzzi and then we'll have to take another shower right afterwards. And so some, there's times where we won't get in it at the one at our house, but the one up in Truckee or at the Park City house, those ones are like, Man, I, I'll get I'll get that thing and feel feel refreshed and the, my skin feels amazing. Speaking of Park yeah. City, uh, how far out is? I had somebody message me because we put up the site. What's the site to check out the house? Mindpumpparkcity.com. Mindpumpparkcity.com. Is it getting all crazy booked? This whole month is. Yeah. Okay. I, got I think we have to by a couple. So people. it's first come, first serve, basically. So we're not giving anybody special treatment. So I mean, if you want to get in. I mean, if you want to Venmo me and bribe me under the <laughs> table, like, uh, I mean, maybe you uh, make some moves. Send, send somebody a watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You want to send me a watch? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll book you. <laughs> we'll book you out. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's messed up. Yeah. I think we have, um, we have like, uh, not even a full week. We, in, in May, May, uh, already, already booked out. This was actually, this last month was the first time we had a really slow month, which I think was because that's in Park City, that's when they start to close down the ski resorts. Oh, yeah. I see. And yeah. so there was like a transition of, 
uh, uh, the ski resorts getting closed. The season's kind of changing. So, but this yeah, month starting is starting to warm up there now. So, oh. yeah, this month is already cranking. Hey, I want, I want, I know you guys always tease me over this, but they're, one of the amazing uh, values in having such a big, I have a huge family, local, a lot of them are local. So, if we throw a party um, and we want everybody to come, it's very easy to, to have 60, 70 people show up. Like, very easy. That's how big my family is. But one of the incredible values of having a big family besides, uh, you know, love and support and all that stuff is I have so many people that I can have test out supplements and products for us. <laughs> so I okay, have- Who's the guinea pig this time? Green juice. I had my aunt start using the Organifi green juice. All right. She was showing me some other supplements that she's taking. I'm like, why are you taking this? She's like, oh, I want to just feel healthier. That was what she said. I said, what do you mean by that? Oh, you know, better digestion, better energy. And I looked at the product and I said, well- I don't know if this ingredient is good. That's a little too stimulant uh, for you. You said you had issues with sleep. So I, you know, I go back here and I grab green juice and I gave it to her and we, and she loved it. So yeah. it's, it's wonderful because I could just have all these family members. I could just give stuff to <laughs> test out. So she loves it. She's like, she's got, so now, my, now this is what's cool about this. This is my aunt. That's a closer. I have an aunt that is one of the best salespeople in the family. Oh, wow. So now she can get everybody oh, else. Man. Now here's the problem with that. They're all my family. So nobody's buying shit. They're all like, Sad, you got more free? <laughs> sit, sit it for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all want the Italian discount, you know? That's can right. we all get free product? Anyway. Yeah. Speaking of health, uh, I wanted to address something that I, you know, I don't know if we've addressed this before and probably because uh, it, for most people, this doesn't apply. And when we communicate on the show, we try to communicate to the average person. We've always said that strength is the best physical pursuit. In, in some cases, this is not true. It is not true that strength is the best physical pursuit once you start to become pretty damn strong and advanced. Once you're lifting a lot of weight, then trying to lift more weight isn't necessarily the best idea because the risk versus reward starts to flip. So when you're a beginner, risk versus reward, it's amazing. You get stronger. You get all these incredible benefits. So long as your form is good, the risk is really low. But when you're getting like really strong... If you keep pushing strength, you have a margin of error to where you're safe and you or you become injured of like, you know, like 0.1 degree. When you get really strong, you should you probably don't want to chase strength uh, as much or any more because you're not going to get much reward for adding 10 pounds to your 500 pound squat, but the risk of pursuing that is so high. So I just want to say that. I'm glad you said that because we don't actually say that we 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 tend to because so to, few people are i know and i know why we we push that way because more people need to hear the other the other message but there's a ton of truth in that and the other part to your point uh, it uh the returns get mm-hmm. lower and that's lower. what i mean mm-hmm. like so how much would your return so your risk your risk goes up dramatically as you become really really strong because you've been doing this for years pursuing strength uh, and then the reward, the payback that you get from it is so incremental that it's, whereas if you're somebody who has neglected, say, mobility for, you know, five years of training strength, the return that you may get on it is, yep. you may not see a new, technically a PR or add a bunch of weight to the bar, but the way you feel, mm-hmm. the way you move, the better connected you are, the, the better range of motion that you have, like the, ret- totally. the return on the other attributes that you get by pursuing that, or let's say you never pursue anything like in the athletic endeavor where you're never doing anything explosive or working on deceleration or control or stability. Like if you never train that way, you're always chasing strength all the time, man, there's, there's, there's a lot to be gained by switching the focus in that direction. Yeah. The only direction from there is like the artificial support system that you'll find with a lot of the, the training aids and like belts Mm. and knee sleeves and arm, you know, all these devices and things to really help keep that as your main focus when in fact, like you could build that intrinsically, but it does take work. And so that is, you know, the benefit of kind of stepping away for a bit and really, you know, reassessing like what I can do uh, to, to build myself back up from within. That's it. All right. Any shout outs? Does anybody save a shout out for today? So uh, I do have a shout out and um, I found uh, this guy through, um, Chris Williamson, he interviewed, he's actually interviewed him three times and I went down the rabbit hole of stuff. Absolutely. And he's coming on our show. We have, I don't know what date we have him scheduled, but he's a great follow. Uh, his Instagram handle is attachment Adam. 
and he's a relationship psychologist, right? So excellent information. I really, mean, you will get lost in his stuff. He's really, an expert really good. on attachment theory, which is really good. Yeah, and his following's relatively small on Instagram, so he's like on the come up right now. So a real cool person to pay attention right now. I think he's going to continue to explode. Very excited to have him in studio and connect with him. Hey, check this out. It's really hard to eat healthy when you're on the go, right? Convenience stores and gas stations tend to have crap. Well, there's a company we work with called Paleo Valley. They make meat sticks that are grass-fed, high in protein, and also not dry. They're actually quite delicious. Go check them out. They have lots of other products as well. The meat sticks just happen to be one of our favorites. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 15 for 15% off your order. All right, back to the show. First question is from Hannah Beast. What is the connection between hip and knee pain and how to solve it? Oh, very strong connection between hip dysfunction and knee pain. Also ankle and foot dysfunction and knee pain. But let's start with, let's talk about the hip because that's the question. So the best way I can explain it is if you look at the knee, if you deconstruct the knee joint, it really only does two things. It, it flexes and extends, right? It bends and it straightens out. And it doesn't really rotate. There's a little bit of rotation, but that's there's no muscles that really control that. So it doesn't twist. It doesn't bend laterally. So I can't take my knee and bend it to the left or to the right. And I can't really bend it forward. There's a little bit of hyperextension, but that's it. So it just flexes and extends. But what happens when the hip, which does do all those things, the hip can flex and extend. It can go in front of you, behind you. It and can, the ankle. It can, it, yeah, and the ankle too, right? It can. You can bring out your leg out to the side. It can bring the leg to the middle. It can rotate and twist. What if the muscles that control all those movements are too weak? What if you do a squat and your hip's inability to prevent your knee, your leg from twisting is not strong enough or to prevent your leg from pushing out is not strong enough? Well, then what happens is the ligaments that are not supposed to do those things support the knee joint and keep it strong and steady. Over time, those ligaments can create, you can create problems, you can create injuries and inflammations because they are designed to stabilize the knee, but they're not designed to stabilize tons of weight over time or things that the hip is supposed to do. So if the hip can't do something, then the knee joint is going to have to try and do it. And because it's not designed or evolved mm. to necessarily support it in that way, they're That's bearing too much problems. of the brunt of the force. That's right. We, and in fact, yeah, our body's designed to, to be able to handle that more effectively with the hip. And, you know, all that range of motion, like you said, to be able to turn and rotate and, and hit all those different angles. Uh, you know, you're going to look towards the hips. And then you briefly mentioned, like, the ankles as well, too. That's a big, uh, big factor when it comes to the knees. So the knees, rarely I found, like um, – you know, with, with knee pain and with any kind of knee injury, uh, unless it's like a, a, a real acute, acute, yeah, like a like yeah. a blunt force trauma where like you're in a in a game and, and something happens where it, like you get you know a direct shot to the knee where we get like some kind of a, a tear there in the ligament. Is it a factor where the knee is is the culprit? Never in my experience. The only time that somebody has knee pain that isn't due to either hip or ankle issues was when they had an acute injury. So if somebody- And they never healed right or something. Yeah, that's the that's the only- And even then, by the way, when they had like a torn ACL or MCL, mm -hmm. many times what le led to the, the tear or the injury was weakness in the hip or weakness in the ankles. Mm -hmm. That's why the knee gave out. So even in those situations where there was an acute injury, almost always is the hip and ankle involved. So it's kind of like a default for sure go-to if you have any sort of chronic knee pain at all that you start to address hip mobility and ankle mobility and then strengthening those in the in hopefully a newfound rain, range of motion that you will start to see some sort of uh, alleviation in the pain in that area. Yeah, so if you want healthy knees, you need to have stable, strong, healthy hips, ankles, and feet when people have a bad knee or a knee that bothers them, they tend to place all the emphasis on working on the knee, but oftentimes that's not the problem. And so you end up focusing on the knee, looking at the knee, what's happening with the knee. Oh, it starts to feel better. Now it's not feeling better. What's going on? It's because the hip and the ankle and the foot were where that problem started. So to give another, you know, kind of something to support this, female athletes uh, suffer from ACL tears at a significantly higher rate than male athletes. This is a fact. Any mm -hmm. physio will tell you this. Why? Because 
females have wider hips than males do or pelvis uh, bones. So the angle from the hip to the knee is greater and that puts more stress on the ligaments uh, of the knee. So female athletes, if, you, if you're a trainer and you work with female athletes, you know this. You have to place more emphasis on stabilization of the hips uh, and ankle stabilization with female athletes than male athletes because the demands are much higher on their knee because that angle is 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 harsher, whereas a, a male athlete is much more straight than it is with a female athlete. By the way, when you get to the highest level of competition with female athletes, the ones that compete at you know, pro level or Olympic levels, what you'll notice is they have narrow hips mm -hmm. because that's part of the reason why they were able to perform so well is they were just genetically had more narrow hips and had that straight angle and probably didn't suffer from as many of those, of those issues. Right, and that's where some of the myth comes in to like, you know, doing CrossFit or something in some women. Makes are, you boxy. Yeah, like boxy, you know, but that's just a selection, self-selection. Exactly. Thing. Now, to give another example, um, let's say I were to, to pick something up and bring it to my mouth. In order to do so, I'd be using a little bit of wrist, finger, lots of elbow, and a little bit of shoulder. Now imagine if I had to do that, but my elbow was fixed, okay? In order for me to even try, I would use way more shoulder and scapula, way more wrist and finger to try and reach my mouth. Now, I wouldn't be able to, but my point is I'm overcompensating with these other joints to perform this action because my elbow can no longer do what it's supposed to. So when your hip and, and your ankle and your foot aren't doing what they're supposed to, the knee tries to do more than it's designed for or that it, it can is capable of. And that's why people start to develop uh, chronic knee problems. Next question is from Ali Pack. How can I get better depth for squats? Uh, I mean, the simple answer is to practice squatting deeper and work on the things that allow you to get deeper. Ankle, mobility, stability of the hip, uh, strength in the spine. That's general though, but you have to kind of get specific because it could be one or all of those things or even something else. For me, it was my ankles. And I think that's more common than not, right? Wouldn't you say it's, it's ankle rarely, often? yeah, it's, it's usually ankle. It's rarely not ankles. It's ra rarely ever is it not ankle yeah. in, in related, or at least that's one of the major issues. And one of the easiest ways to find out this you is, you know, put your feet or your heels on some thick blocks or two plates, you know, yeah. put, put two 45 pound plates, put your heels on there. And all of a sudden you two, squat deep. Yeah. And then can you sit all the way down? No mm -hmm. problem. If you can sit all the way down, no problem with your heels elevated like that. That means it's an ankle mobility issue. That's keeping you from that type of depth. Now, if you elevate your heels that much and you still can't sit your butt all the way back down on your calves. Okay. Well then maybe there is like a hip instability issue that's going on that we need to address. But more often than not, um, ankle mobility is the is the number one reason why I can't get somebody to break parallel. Yeah, and if not, I mean, I have had some clients where they just have this natural sort of governing in place where they get to a certain range, and then they've always trained that way to hit that like parallel mark and nothing lower. Uh, so to treat this as a completely different exercise and not use the same weight, really reduce the amount of load, uh, gradually, incrementally make their way down and just focus on um, being able to summon more force and to be able to dig your way out of like each angle as you uh, approach it. So it's it, it, it's a lot more of a gradual process than you'd think and, and to not like rush your way down to that depth. That's a great point. I mean, that speaks to what Sal was saying over the just like potentially just practicing it more because um, I think I had kind of a combination of the two. I was taught to never, never break 90. <laughs> I was taught to go right to 90 degrees. So yeah. even as a young trainer, I was training that way for a long time. And then in addition to that, I didn't have the ankle mobility. So then I built strength up in that shortened range of motion. And then thinking that I'm just going to do that same weight full depth is not happening. So yeah, first practice body weight. Can you get yourself all the way down in that position comfortably and then elevate the heels and see if that helps. And it's more than likely one of those yeah. two things. Now this, this begs the question, why would I want to go deeper with my squats? Um, well, first off, we're going to, we're going to refer to uh, safe depth, or depth that you can control. And that's different from person to person. Mm -hmm. And you can improve upon this. So, of course, don't go squat deeper than you have the control and stability for. That's bad. Okay. But why would you want to teach yourself to be able to squat deeper with good control and good stability? Because you build generally more muscle. And generally, you build more strength overall. So, for most people, except for like specific, like sports specific type stuff, Generally, most people do squats because they want to develop their lower body. They want 
nice wide range of strength. They want to have no knee pain, no hip pain, no back pain. They want to feel really good. Well, being able to do really deep squats with good form, good stability, and con good control will do that better than doing squats that aren't so deep. Mm -hmm. So the pursuit of getting deep squats and then the ability to do them, it just, it's way more valuable. A good deep squat is far more valuable than a good not so deep squat. So if you can't squat that deep because something is wrong with your technique or your form or your stability or mobility, work on those things because you're not getting all of the benefits of this tremendous exercise known as squats. Next question is from Josh Nickerson. What if I have high total T but low free T? Does that mean I have a lot in my body and I'm not using utilizing all of it? If so, how do I fix it? This is interesting because, uh, okay, so total testosterone, and T is what he's referring to as testosterone. Total testosterone is the amount of uh, just circulating testosterone you have in your body. Free testosterone is the testosterone that your body's able to utilize and they are two different things. You can have testosterone that is bound up, uh, to use the term that the hormone specialist will say, by something called sex binding globulin hormone. And what happens is it, when it's binding it up, you just can't, your body just can't, can't use, use it. it. So it's like, imagine having all this food in your house, but it's all locked behind, uh, you know, in a safe. So we got all this food, but we can't eat it. So we're still gonna starve. Is this like the scientific term for blue balls? <laughs> no. Is that not right? It's a good connection there. No. <laughs> it kind of sounds like it, doesn't it? No, 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 no. No? It's all bound up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's got to get it to free. Just need a release. You got to free it. Jeez. I don't even think Blue Balls is real, by the way. I think that was a, that, that, that's a myth made up by dudes. To get sorry, sorry, don't, 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 don't promote, you from this. Don't sorry. Promote it does look up Blue Balls real quick. Yeah. Yeah. No, don't do that. Um, so, okay. So it's like you have all this testosterone, but you can't use it. So you can literally, and th there's lots of cases of this, where a man will get his testosterone levels checked. The doctor only checks total testosterone. And the doctor's like, your testosterone is fine. And the guy's yeah. like, man, I got all these. You get all the symptoms and everything else, and it doesn't explain any of that. Yeah, all these low testosterone symptoms. Like I, I don't, I'm low motivation, low, low libido, libido yeah. low energy. Like I feel anxious. But the doctor said my total testosterone was 800, which is really high. Like, this doesn't make sense. It's because, or it could be because that testosterone is not able to be utilized. So this person obviously has this issue. So uh, what does this mean? Can you fix it? There's some things you could do. The most, to my knowledge, the most common reasons for this is a potential nutrient deficiency. Selenium, uh, boron, I believe is another one. If, it's, if you don't have enough, I think you produce too much sex binding globulin hormone. I believe stress can play a role in this. Um, if this is you, I definitely recommend you see a specialist that understands testosterone really well because yep. just going on testosterone wouldn't necessarily uh, help. You could actually get more side effects. And there are ways you can, um, you can lower the amount of sex binding globulin hormone and raise free testosterone. Um, I know Doug, in fact, uh, I don't know if I'm, I should ask you if I should. No, that's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Go Put ahead. it all out there. Yeah, a lot of erectile dysfunction. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> they're talking about blue balls. Anyway. <laughs> that's not what it was. No. Nah. No, when we worked with, uh, so we, we work with a bunch of experts in this at mphormones.com and we all got blood tests. Doug's total T was high, but his free T was low in comparison because a lot of it was bound up. Yeah. And I think uh, we've determined partly that stress has mm. a lot to do with that. Yeah. Uh, high cortisol levels. So cortisol actually affects your ability to free up that testosterone yep, from yep. my understanding. Yeah. And so, so like Dr. Cabral, for example, you know, he had me uh, take some supplements. I think DHEA was one of them. Okay. Um, I'm just, they, he has an actual supplement. It's a testosterone support supplement that I've taken. Oh. I haven't been tested here though for like four, four or five months. And so I'd be interested to see where I'm at right now. Yeah. So, so lifestyle can affect this quite a bit. Um, so sleep, yeah, I'd say so sleep for sure. Yeah. So if you go mphormones.com, they'll, you can, you know, sign up for like a full panel and they're experts. So they'll test everything, including total and free testosterone. And then they have ways of either medically or lifestyle wise of getting you the right ratio of total uh, to free. Uh, because again, you could literally have great total testosterone and have all the symptoms of low testosterone, 
which, uh, I mean, if you don't know this, can be so mysterious and frustrating. Because like, I don't understand. I have high testosterone. I feel like shit, though. Right. This doesn't make any sense. I thought I've heard you say, too, that uh, androgen receptor density also makes a difference, too. Is it, that it does, but that doesn't have anything to do with this. Um, and that is that could be largely genetic. Um, that wouldn't have anything to do with the uptake of the testosterone? Like no. I mean, so actually what happens, what the studies show, is when your testosterone is low or your free testosterone is low, your androgen receptor density goes up to try to make up the difference. Oh. Yeah, so, so people with low testosterone, their bodies will increase the amount of androgen receptors to try to offset it. This is why I, I mean, I experienced this. So when I got tested, my testosterone was in the floor. Um, and when I went on testosterone for like a good three months, I felt like, uh, I was a maniac because, because it's probably uptake. I had all so many androgen receptors. Okay. Yeah. That I was like, I was like a 14 year old boy. It wasn't, it, it wasn't, prime, it was prime for it. It was too much. Right. Okay. But now, now they've regulated and, and kind of balanced out. So, but no, this is different than that. Next question is from Johnny, John, John 88. My girlfriend avoids doing chest workouts as she thinks that it will make her boobs get smaller. Is this really true? False. Oh, no. Yeah, you can't yeah. spot reduce. So I, you work out an area, your body doesn't just burn body fat from that area. It loses it from everywhere. Not only that, it'll actually it'll actually make your boobs sit up higher. It lifts them. Yeah. Yep. You build the upper chest muscles so they're not, they're not uh, loose and saggy, for a lack of a better term. Uh, and they're tight and filled. Perkier. Yeah, it'll, perk, it'll it'll set them up. So that anytime I had I'd have girls that I was training that were afraid of this. That's how I'd explain to them, and that always got them to like switch gears. On how they yeah, go. They're like okay, we can do some chest. You know what I'm saying? Because this idea that um, now if you lean out and You'll you lose lose, some, lose yeah. lots of body yeah. fat, then you're you're because overall body fat. Because yeah, yeah boob, boobs are 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 high in in body fat, right? So if you lose a, a significant amount of body fat, then yeah, the, the boobs are going to shrink a little bit. But doing chest specifically is not going to do that, and in fact, will actually make the breasts sit up more upright. Uh, so. To that, do you know that there was a study? I might have brought this up on the show a long time ago. That wearing, I'm not trying to convince everybody to doing this, by the way. Uh, but wearing bras um, all the time actually uh, can cause your boobs to sag more because well, it's dependent like a, it's like on a cast. It. Yes, yeah. Yeah. because it's holding the boobs up and the right. muscles and ligaments and things that support the breast weaken because they're no longer needed. Now to do I imagine it. that the so they actually become. More I sad. imagine the studies on that though are probably women who don't train at all, right? Because if you don't train at all and you put a cast on the on them by you know yeah. i.e. where versus a woman who trains Oh, I'm chest, sure that offsets it, yeah. Right, probably offsets that. So if you train chest all the time, even if you obviously wear a bra all the time, that probably offsets that where I bet that study was done on women that don't. Yeah, don't yeah. I mean, imagine you dress up a cross syndrome and you're working all those muscles like, you know, in your back and everything to make sure your posture is nice and presented upright like you're going to be, you know, miles ahead of, of most. Yeah, but you can't spot reduce. So this, this, is, a, this is an old fear. I used to hear this all. I don't hear as much anymore. So it's interesting that it, that it, it just popped up because I think yeah. a lot of people know this now, but just like your butt, like you could have body fat on your butt and not even build your butt much just a little bit and your butt will sit higher yeah because the muscles lift everything same thing with the chest so look if you like mind pump head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides you can also find all of us on social media so justin is on instagram at mind pump justin i'm on instagram at mind pump de stefano and adam is on instagram at mind pump adam Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me, for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 